Salon Team Targets. How are you using Salon Team Targets? In this little video, I am filming live from the Kent countryside. I was gonna go live and I thought, I'm not sure what the connection's like. So I'm just gonna film this for you now and then post it up on the group. Targets. Now, the importance of targets is that people need to be accountable. They must have targets, but targets need to be the right target. So what is the right target? Well, I'm going to give you a few pointers. One of the first things I've always done when I've gone into managed teams or I'm going into support salon owners is to find out exactly, you know, what are the, the targets? What are we focusing on? Because often what the focus will be will be money. Now, there's nothing wrong with that as long as our team is completely happy with how to make money. And for a lot of team members, there's a, a mental block, a mental barrier to money because it's then that sort of like, but I don't want to be a salesperson. I didn't come into this industry to sell stuff. And our focus is money and not the client. And I always put it as the, it's the, the salon and spa paradox. When you focus on the money, you don't make it. When you focus on the client, it rolls in with ease. So having targets that are client focused is much more effective. If you have a team that has a mental block that, you know, I don't want to be a salesperson. I didn't come into this industry so I could sell shampoo. You know, no one runs out of college with their bit of paper in hand. like, I'm a qualified therapist. I can now sell moisturizers. No, we focus on people. And so it's getting our teams to have a target that is focused to helping people. And one of my favorite ways of using that is something I call CPS, the Complete Professional Service, which is all about how we give advice to clients, which is the key habit in our industry that makes a salon money. Now, habits are anything we can do without thinking. You can tie your shoelace, drive a car, anything that you can do where you don't have to put much thought into it is a habit. And getting our teams to have a client advice habit means that eventually our teams get to a point where giving advice is just second nature. It's no different to picking up the spatula to wax a leg or an eyebrow or to cleanse a face, to effleurage a back, to section hair, to placing our, our foils. It becomes so natural that we don't have to think about it. It's not hard work anymore. That's what I try and that's a big part of what I do is, is looking at how to install client habits on how we perform with our clients based around retention, people are rebooking, people stay with us, returning again and again, retail, home care advice, giving clients professional advice so they can follow up what we've started with something at home recommendations these are the four r's of salon revenue recommendations that's cross promoting upselling course sales anything in which we are taking a client from whether it be a blow dry a cut a color to additional services or cross promoting into other departments so if your hair and beauty and then finally referrals referrals is a sales process there is a system a way in which we can get more referrals and that's what I train. And part of the reason for that is that it's, it's what's missing in our industry. It, it's not what's trained in colleges. It's not what's trained by our suppliers. It really comes down to salon owners taking these young people or older people, makes no difference of age, and fine tuning, polishing their skills with their clients. So the target then, if we're using something like CPS, and CPS is just added to our computer system so we can monitor and the advice is being given. And so what we do is we just add a service to the computer system. It has no financial value, so there's no charge to the client. It takes no time. But if a client has been given advice, we can then add it to the computer and we can make sure that actually it's being done. Because if we were to go through, I'm sure any salon that is not yet at that 70 to 90% retention, 20% plus retail, I will guarantee a big part of the reason is they're not giving advice because they don't know how. 
No one's shown them. So if we're just giving them retail targets, we're just giving them uh, sales targets for color, sales targets for upgrading services. We're focusing them on money. They don't like it. They're not comfortable with it. They don't know how to do it. That for a lot of our, our industry is the issue. That's why so many salons fail because we're not generating enough money because the teams don't know how to. And we're focusing them on money and not on clients. And that's what we need to do. So with targets, I like to go then with CPS. That becomes our team target. If a team isn't hitting targets, I like to bring them all together and put one target in place because then I can assist the poorer members of the team who aren't performing to up their game. And my top performers have now a reason because I'll link some form of acknowledgement or incentive to the team achieving and hitting the target. And if I can do that, then I know my seniors will assist the lower team members to pull them up. And in doing that, I'll increase the revenue. When it comes to money targets, because teams do need to know what they should be hitting, I've always looked at it as though I go as small as I physically can. I might want them to do eight grand a week, but if they're only doing 900, saying like, here's your target and it's 9,000 pounds, $8,000, and they're only doing a grand, it's such a massive jump. And the chances are that, it, well, every single week, they're not going to go from, I'm doing 1,000 this week, but she said, I'm going to do eight. So now I've, I've, I've done 8,392. Who would have thought putting that target in place, I've just gone and bashed it out of the park. It's not going to happen. In which case, every single week, that person fails. Your target was 2,000. You've done 1,200. You missed it. I failed and we end up then with mental blocks because our teams will eventually start to go there's no way I can do that that's impossible there's no way I'm ever going to hit that and as soon as we get that type of thinking it creates barriers I can't do it and if they believe they can't do it they ain't never gonna do it for me when I was working with underperformers and I was giving out a financial target, I asked them for $1 more. When I was working stateside and working in dollars, and when I was working in the UK, just a pound, give me an extra pound next week. Now, it might seem like, but Caroline, you know, I've got, I've got bills to pay. I need these people to get up higher. Well, what I always found would happen is that they'd smash it which meant that I had something then to give them recognition and praise and reward. Even if the reward was literally just the fact that I recognize they've worked bloody hard and they've smashed their target and I'm so proud of them. Just giving them that acknowledgement that I see you have done a brilliant job, well done. Thank you, just that word, thank you, can make a massive difference. But then I'd reset the target. So last week you did 700, this week you've done 795, picking figures out of my head. I just want one pound more, one dollar more. Next week, they're going to be up in 850, as long as I'm putting marketing in place to give them the clients to work with. Fantastic, you smashed it out the park. I'm so impressed. It's amazing what you're doing. I want them to have the mental thinking process of I can do it. I can easily do that. A pound? I can do that. Yeah, all right, no worries. Now, I would often give them the opportunity of you set the target, but if they tried to set it really high, I'd, I'd warm them against it, bring it back down a little bit. I want them to hit it every week because then I build their confidence. And if I'm building their confidence, if they're feeling good, if they know they can do it, then the next week they'll smash it. And I'll move them faster by giving them a small goal to achieve than setting them up to fail by giving them this massive target that feels impossible, that they fail to achieve each week, damaging their self-esteem, their confidence and slowing growth down. So how are you setting targets? 
Do you use client focused targets? Are you just setting financial ones? Are you setting, I call it the money mountain, where you set them this massive target that just feels like this, I'm standing at the bottom of Everest, looking up thinking, oh, there's no way I can do that. I'm never going to achieve it. Are you setting them up to fail? Are you setting them up to succeed? How are you using targets to motivate and drive your team? I will leave it there. If you have any questions, if you've got any comments, do post them below. I will leave you now from the very sunny countryside of Kent. I love where I live. I used to live in the city. I've escaped to the country. And I will catch up with you soon. If you have any questions, do post them below. You are always welcome to message me and I will look forward to catching up with you soon. Next week, I will try and be live from my office and then you can join me if you wish to and we'll be continuing down the line of team development. So that's my area of special speciality. Speciality. Developing teams. If you have a team that's underperforming, then I have the skills, the knowledge and experience to assist you in developing them into top performers. Until next week, I will catch up with you, I'm sure, soon. Have a fantastic day. Take care now. Bye.